The great country of India is famous for many things, but tank production isn't one of them. And yet, they decided to develop their own MBT. Why would that be? Today, we'll find out. It all started with India's independence and the notion of neutrality. Unlike its neighbor, Pakistan, India wouldn't ally itself openly with anyone during the Cold War. In a bipolar world, neutrality usually means you don't have to spend as much on the military. That wasn't the case of India, as its founding left it with aggressive neighbors and a lot of border disputes. That is why India needed modern arms. But here's the catch. Not being anyone's close friend means you won't get your hands on cutting-edge tech from either side. That's why a decision was made to develop a domestic tank to bridge the technology gap. Despite the Indian experience with MBT production, the first Indian domestic MBT, the Vijayanta, performed pretty well, which encouraged the Indians to continue developing their own armor. After a decade of development, a prototype of the new MBT was unveiled in 1984, bearing the name Arjun after a prince from the Mahabharata. The program wasn't that costly either with a bill of 30 million USD, 10 times less than the American MBT-70. There's an old saying though, you get what you pay for. The reality was that the Arjun development was a string of expensive failures. At first, the Indians tried to develop their own power pack, but failed miserably due to not having mastered metallurgy to the level required. As a result, not only was the engine incredibly unreliable, but the tank's armor was brittle as well. In desperation, the Indians turned to Kraus Mafi for help, and the initial prototype strongly resembled the Leopard 2 MBT. Coincidence? Don't think so. But the fun didn't end there. Instead of offering Leopard 2 engines, the Indians went with what was basically a unique Leopard 1 engine cranked up to 1400 horsepower, using turbochargers, an incredibly unreliable unit, and they operated them in the desert. It does not take an expert to imagine the results. Aside from constant engine and suspension breakdowns, the testing that took place between 1984 and 1987 unveiled a number of critical issues. The turret was so poorly designed that traversing it would hit the driver in the head, leading to severe serious injuries. Additionally, it featured numerous shell traps and its poor internal layout meant that it took 15 seconds to reload the gun. But not only that, the gunner could not reload the gun in an emergency. And the loader was also supposed to operate a turret machine gun so the tank could effectively fire its main gun or its turret machine gun, but not both. And finally, the tank was nowhere near locally produced, with more than half of its components of foreign origin and, of course, massively over budget. By 1991, only 12 prototypes had been produced and were unable to effectively conduct military operations in the Rajasthan, which was the expected spot of the next armored clash with Pakistan. What do you do with such a terrible tank project? That's right, you send it to mass production immediately. Roughly 100 tanks have been completed until 2010, with flaws and everything. In the meantime, the Indians went to almost comical lengths to hire the problems of the program. In 2008, another exercise took place where the tanks were breaking down almost constantly. In Indians blamed the issues on sabotage, but an independent investigation by MTU engineers unveiled that the engines had been tampered with by the crews in order to improve their performance. This led directly to an installation of a black box to prevent any further adjustments. By that time, the Indian Army had had enough. Aside from purchasing Russian T-90S tanks, all procurements were cancelled the same year. With almost four decades of development and nothing to show for it, the Indians would finally ask the Israelis for help in 2013. In two years, the company Elbit basically rebuilt the Arjun from scratch, resulting in a variant called MK.2 that, despite bearing the same name, is a totally different vehicle. And that's where the program is right now. In a recent interview, an Indian Army general claimed that the Arjun would become fully operational by 2025. It seems the comedy that is the Arjun program is yet to have another act. But that is a story for another time. 